Hello and welcome to CodeBlaze and first of all a very happy new year to everyone. So today I'll be demoing Vloxy Engine. Vloxy Engine is an extensible voxel system for Unity. So it allows you to create your own voxel systems on top of it by providing you set of building blocks and components that you can modify on your own. So one of the main design principles for Vloxy Engine was to provide an extensible and a comprehensive API. So you should be able to change each and every component provided by the system and that's what I'm going to demo today. So I'll be creating this vertex colored based voxel system which has infinite generation and multi-threaded meshing. So all this is the current capabilities provided by the engine and I would be adding a lot more in the future. So let's get started. So here I have a blank unity scene and the first thing we need to do is create our block structure. So we'll basically need to tell the engine what data each block will hold. So to do that, we will create a simple structure. I'll call it colored block. And this will extend from I block interface, which is again provided by the library. And you will need to implement a few methods here which is the transparency methods so currently is translucent doesn't do anything it's for future only but uh, we'll be implementing is opaque and is transparent uh, so basically we'll be storing color 32 values in each block and depending upon the alpha channel we'll be deciding whether it's an opaque block or a transparent block so we'll have um, our color 32 getter and a constructor for it so i'll just copy this here okay so we have a public getter for the color 32 value and a constructor for it now we'll be implementing the is opaque so if the block has an alpha value of 255 that means it's an opaque block so we'll be returning simply if uh, color dot alpha equals to byte dot max value so color 32 internally stores rgba as bytes and byte max value is 255 so if it's this then we have an opaque block and similarly for transparent we'll copy this condition here and this would be min value and then copy the arrow okay and min value so min value for a byte would be zero so with these two implemented so these two will be internally used by the measure to decide whether to create a chord or not finally we'll be adding a few helper methods as part of an extension class which will allow us to create different types of blocks so we have an air block which is everything zero red green blue null block uh, not be using it so we'll remove it and random solid is basically a random colored block okay so with this we have our block structure ready next we'll be modifying the mesh building logic and we'll be telling the mesh builder to use this color value and assign it to the vertex color array so to do that we'll create another class called colored mesh builder and this will extend from greedy mesh builder so currently there is only one mesh builder available and which targets block based voxel meshes i may add more mesh more types of mesh builders in the future so we extend from it and we need to provide it a generic parameter which is nothing but our block and again this provides a few methods that we can override uh, but we don't need to override anything uh, compulsory and there is nothing compulsory to override so we'll be overriding create quad and compare block okay so create quad is called whenever a quad or four vertexes are being added to the mesh data array and in this case we'll be adding the col to the colors array so colors dot add and we'll be adding a color 32 that we'll get from our block and this will do four times for the four vertices that are being added when this create quad is caught and finally we'll be 
you know implementing the compare block so by default it will use the two equals of the block structure but you can provide a custom implementation here and that's what i'm gonna do so we'll basically compare the color values of block one and block two and decide with the same or not so we are basically comparing the rgba values so with this we have our mesh builder ready now we need to tell the system to use this mesh builder and we do that by creating a provider or in terms of the library a voxel provider so we'll basically be creating a new class again so this will be a, a colored voxel provider and this will extend from voxel provider and again the generic parameter would be the block type so in most of the places the generic parameter is the block type only so you can be assured of that and using this voxel provider you can actually uh, change the implementations of the different parts of the library so if we override the members here so we can provide an implementation for how the chunk should be created which chunk pool should be used so by default it will use the multi-threaded chunk pool we can tell it which mesh builder it needs to use and the mesh build coordinator which it needs to use so basically the chunk pool decides which chunks to be activated and the mesh builder coordinator is where the multi-threaded stuff goes so you can switch to a single threaded coordinator if you want but the ones we are interested in are the mesh builder and the create chunk so rest of them we'll use the default implementations okay so create chunk is where you for now you can put the noise map or the height map logic so i'll just copy this implementation here so as you can see we create a new chunk so this chunk is also a class by the library we give it the block type we give it the chunk settings so the settings objects also is being injected by the library and we tell it where in the world it resides then we create a block and basically use this block to fill the chunk using some Perlin, Perlin noise next we tell override the mesh builder here and we basically return our new colored mesh builder so internally the library will use this provider to get the mesh builder and it will be getting our colored mesh builder so we have a provider ready finally we need to tell the system to use this provider so that is done by the world class so we'll be creating another class here called the colored world so the world is basically the entry point for the system and this will extend from world again the generic parameter is the block type and world itself actually extends from mono behavior so this is the thing that will be adding to the game object and here also we have few methods that we can override the world awake start and update this is basically the wrappers around the unity events and the one thing that we are interested in is the provider since we want the world to use the provider that we have created so to this we need to basically return a function so we will create a func here and it will return our colored voxel provider so with this these four classes or these four c -sharp files we have a vertex colored based voxel system implemented so if i go back to unity let it refresh okay and i create an empty object i'll call it colored world i'll reset this and to this i'll add my colored world component so it takes two things a settings object and a focus so focus is the transform around which you want the world to be generated so if you don't provide it a fixed size world would be generated but currently we can have the main camera be the focus so around the camera the world would be generated and that would be an infinite world and settings object is nothing but a serialized uh, scriptable object that is provided by the library and i already have one and it has a few settings like what should be the draw distance uh, the noise map settings the chunk sizes and the material to be used so this material here is based on this shader 
so this vertex color shader is basically something like by default unity won't use the vertex color attribute to color the meshes but this simple shader basically sets the albedo as the vertex color and nothing else so this shader you can easily create in the shader graph also if you want so back to the colored world we will provide this settings object here so by default uh, the draw distance would be six chunks the page size is used by the pooler so i am in the process of implementing serialization so currently not used chunk size is 32 by 32 by 32 and frequency is for the simple noise generation so if i press play i should have chunks of different colors generating around the camera as you can see we have vertex colored based chunk generation done and if you want a similar effect like i showed earlier so for that some simple tweaks we can do uh, we'll basically go to our mesh builder and return true rather than this logic so this will always try to merge the faces so that way whatever the first block that was providing the color the color of that block will be used for the face and next while the chunk creation we can say rather than creating block at the start on each position you create a block okay so this way we'll get more random colors and if you go back to unity and the scripts will reload and if i press play so since every face will be tried to merge this way uh, the greedy meshing whether it's working or not is more visible also since you'll have these like long faces of the same color so this means there is only one face here and the adjacent vertices have been merged and with this we have uh, basically implemented a vertex color based voxel system and I think this demo gives you a good idea of what the library is currently capable of. The next few features that I'll be adding is uh, some more noise generation, uh, basically a noise generation API. So you'll be able to create some complex height maps. And other than that, some structure generations API and runtime editing of this generation and overall extending the existing API also to provide more capabilities. So as you can see, it's pretty infinite and we have some good fps mind this is currently lower than what actual is because of the recording but i usually get around 300 400 fps so it's pretty performant though currently there is nothing much heavy happening so thanks for watching and i have a few other series planned also and i will try to keep the pace of uploads pretty frequent in this year so that's something i'm going for and the two new series like one series is again on voxels only for unreal engine so uh, because my current series actually got some attention and people have been requesting few things so i'll be extending that series and i have some web development stuff also planned so if you're interested in that do subscribe and give a rating share some feedback share with your friends thank you